Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Joe Boro from Sports Fanatic News, and this is going to be our next NHL team preview on the Pittsburgh Penguins. And the Penguins are going to be an interesting team this year. They're obviously going full gunning with Tristan Yare, with uh, Casey DeSmith uh, as their backup goaltender. And uh, that's obviously going to uh, be interesting. Casey DeSmith, though, he obviously should be able to be a backup. He's a guy that was supposed to win the job last year, actually, if it wasn't for uh, salary cap uh, situations and stipulations. So uh, he should have been the backup last year, and that's what ended up giving Tristan Yare, who's now, excuse me as I adjust the camera here, who's now the guy that's the man over there now as Matt Murray has moved on. So it's going to be interesting what he's able to do. I think this team's got a lot of movement. They obviously brought in Colton uh, Skivier and uh, Mort Shanikowski and Evan Rodriguez. Um, they brought in a legacy as their third string goalie, so that's not really too important. Mike Matheson, who they're going to have to turn around, who's been a struggle bunny in the last couple of years in uh, Florida. And then Cody Cease, who's coming off of a solid year, but I'm not necessarily sure why they necessarily needed uh, Cody Cece, but um, this team's going to be interesting. Uh, Kasperi Kapanen's unfortunately out. Uh, bless his soul, hope he gets well soon uh, due to the COVID uh, quarantine protocol, and uh, he's not going to be able to come right into the lineup, and that's uh, uh, very unfortunate since he's a very highly skilled player that you can put at the top of the lineup there. This team has guys some coming, uh, Samuel Pauline and uh, Nathan Ligari, uh are coming up, and then obviously Joel Bloomquist is the guy that they hope is the uh, future goalie at a 9-3-1 with the uh, Carpot Junior team uh, over in Sweden uh, last year. So I think uh, they got nice things coming. Marcus Peterson uh, is a guy that they obviously really like. John Marino is a guy that they like that they were able to lock up. So I think they're building a nice thing here. They obviously, of course, have the savvy vet and Chris Letang still. Brian Dumoulin, and it's going to be interesting uh, how Cody Cece uh, fits into that bunch. Um, it was interesting that they got rid of a guy like Nick Bukestad, um, and then uh, got rid of a guy like Nick Bukestad, and then got a guy like Mark Janikowski. I like Janikowski, but I feel like Bukestad is a little bit ahead of him, so... I feel like uh, maybe they just feel maybe he fits into the room better. I do really like a guy like Jaron McCann. They picked up. This is a, the team that has a lot of guys that are scrappy, not d that do anything very overly special, but do a lot of things right. And then Brian Rush is a guy that they've really groomed into a very solid NHL player. And then Jason Zucker is the big wild card for their team for really how far they can go because their line depth is not huge, especially until – um, Kapanen comes back because they got Gensel, and then you don't really want Rodriguez on your, I mean, if he can start playing better, you can put him on your first or second line, but you really have Zucker, and then Rust, and then potentially a guy like a Tanev, who's on a very bad contract, um, and a McCann, uh, that was more bottom six guys that are going to be playing on the top six, so I think they're a little bit limited this year, I do not like the depth of New Jersey, which is hard to say, uh, obviously, uh, is something you don't usually say just because they usually are a team that is full of a lot of people. But if they're able to have Matheson get turned around and guys like Janikowski, guys like the J.R. McCann's of the world, the Zucker's able to turn around and have more than just like a team's like competitive, like same level goal se season put into a 56 game schedule. Um, I think that they could be a competitive team. I just have them on the outside looking in of the playoff picture this year. Uh, they're in the very competitive East Division, obviously. Um, and I think, though, between the Rangers and Capitals, who are going to be another the competitive scrappy teams, the Capitals unfortunately lost Hank, uh, there's competition there uh, for those uh, teams to be able to compete and go above them because if the Rangers' young guns don't show up, they'll be able to surpass them, who I think will finish right above them. And then the Capitals, who just because of adjusting to a young goaltender, their goaltender situation, not having the veteran backup. They did bring in Craig e. Anderson, but he's not the same um, as an elder statesman as Henrik Lundqvist was still able to produce, in my opinion. Uh, it's going to be interesting, but Penguins are going to be a scrappy team. I'm going to believe it. I'm not going to believe it until I see it, excuse me, that they're actually going to be a team that's out of the playoffs, but just going in, just from looking at their roster compared to the rest of the East Division rosters, other than excluding like teams like uh, Buffalo and the Devils, who also don't have a lot of depth, obviously. Uh, they're another. They're just the other team that does not seem to have the most depth uh, compared to the other team. Uh, if everything goes right for a team like the Rangers, they have immense depth. So 
I think they're a team that's going to be on the outside looking in, but they'll be very competitive in this division. Teams that are probably in six are just going to miss the playoffs, unfortunately, and be a team that might make it uh, in another division just because of the way this division is. But I hope everybody has enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell below. Have a great, safe, and pleasant evening, everybody. The hockey season is upon us. Get pumped. Peace out, everyone.